So Google just announced tons of stuff. The thing that really caught my attention is agent space. This thing might be huge and it could be multiple things. Number one, it's an ecosystem where all sorts of businesses and developers are able to create agents and have them seamlessly work together. The other thing that they kind of announced along with this is an open protocol for developing agents, A to A, agent to agent protocol. I'll come right out and say it. The reason why this could be a big, big deal is because just like back in the days, Google dominated sort of like the web space by just having a search bar, right? Google.com, you type in what you want and it goes and it finds whatever website you need. Made all its money by putting some ads here and there. As AI takes over, that might be a little bit outdated, the idea of search. Now, more and more people familiar with AI, we find ourselves using a chatbot, some sort of an AI agent that does tasks on our behalf that finds information for us. The entry to the web isn't necessarily the search bar. It might be your sort of agent, your client, your chatbot that represents you and then goes out there and finds the information for you. Keep that in mind as we look at this. Let's look at a quick video from Google. And in the end, we're gonna dive deep into what it is that they're actually cooking up here. And make no mistake, they have been cooking. Let's go. So for the next few minutes, I'm gonna be a relationship manager at a bank. Starting with a quick tour, this is my homepage, authenticated and personalized just for me. The agent gallery lets me see my company's approved selection of purpose-built agents, including ones powered by third-party models like Llama and Claude. You see we've got some Google-made agents, we have agents that my bank has made available to me, either ones we've created or ones built by partners. And then the best part, my own personal agents, which I can build directly inside agent space with this button over here, or even easier just from having a little conversation. Let's see how easy it is to create an agent to automate a daily task. Now it's critical for me to stay on top of what's going on with my clients. So I start every morning with a portfolio analysis. And I'm gonna use a clipboard because no one wants to watch me typing. Run an analysis of my client portfolio and identify potential risks and opportunities. This only uses information that I have permission to access. It knows which clients are mine and summarizes top points for my data sources like OneDrive, Salesforce, or Dun & Bradstreet's. If I have questions, I have a direct link to my sources here. And if I need even more control, I can refine that list of sources. But agent space doesn't just summarize information, it's interpreting my question and surfacing what matters most. For example, in this chart, I can see agent spaces flag that Acme General Contracting might have some cash flow problems in the future. Already, it's given me a massive report, which is gonna save me a ton of manual research, and I can go ahead and read this later. But for now, let's set up an agent so I can keep an eye on Acme. Agent Space automatically generates an agent plan based on our conversation so far. And this is good, but I think I want more. I'm gonna have it generate an audio summary and send it to my inbox so I can listen to it on my morning commute. And just like that, I have built my own custom agent to use whenever I want without writing a single line of code. Now, Agent Space has identified a cash flow problem with Acme General Contracting. I need to dig into that. Maybe this is a problem with construction in general and not specific to Acme. Agent Space has already identified that possibility as a suggested follow-up. So now let's go ahead and deep dive into general contracting industry trends. This activates Google's Enterprise Deep Research Agent, which starts by telling me what it plans to research and in what order. At this point, I could edit this plan if I wanted to, but it looks pretty good, so I'll start the research. Now I do want to call out, we've cached the plan and the results here. Normally this would take a little bit longer. This agent is pulling in real-time information from Google search to build its report. But even cooler, it's also searching my internal enterprise data and adjusting this plan in real time, adding additional questions based on what it's going to find along the way. And again, an incredibly insightful analysis, including some source links. But thankfully, here at the bottom, it also is gonna give me a great succinct executive summary. Let's take a quick look at this. Yep, I can see Acme General Contracting is likely being affected by rising material costs, supply chain disruptions, and regulatory complexities that pose significant hurdles. That's really great. I mean, okay, maybe not for Acme, but the analysis is really great. 
I don't want Acme to be surprised by this at all. So I'm gonna have our bank's cash flow agent do some forecasting across the next three quarters for me. This agent uses Google's new time series forecasting model, which is specifically trained for scenarios just like this. And again, I'm gonna get a super clear, very, very clear summary with at the bottom, some great recommended steps for Acme. And I need them to see it right away so I can ask agent space, draft me an email to Acme General Contracting CEO requesting a meeting for next week. And just like that, I've got the draft ready to go. And even better, I can send it off directly from within agent space so I don't even have to switch to Outlook or Gmail. I'm all set. And agent space has saved my session so I can prep for that meeting right where I left off whenever I'm ready. Let's go ahead and recap. While I don't actually work for a bank, the value that agent space adds is very real. It's so easy to interact with all of your enterprise data and tools in one place and build and use agents directly from that conversational workflow. Powered by Gemini 2.5 and Google search technology, agent space is the only hyperscaler platform on the market that can connect to third party data and tools and offers interoperability with, interoperability with third party agents and models for companies with strict regulatory needs, like a bank. Agents, agent space provides stringent access controls at the employee level and can operate within your own VPC, ensuring that your data stays yours while meeting all of your requirements. Agent space is a game changer, and we can't wait to see how you all put it to work. Google has launched agent space. So you have to sign up, show interest, and then maybe you get in. It's not available to everybody, but this is an agent to agent protocol, allowing different businesses and business agents to communicate with one another. So here's a quick video. For example, here we're asking this agent, I am hiring for a staff software engineer position attached is the job description. Can you help me fill this role? The agent goes on to uh, source candidates and looks through the various available agents for one that's able to do candidate sourcing, or as they call it, capability discovery. So agents can advertise the, their capabilities to clients, and then clients can choose to use those specific agents to complete their tasks. So this is a very similar to Notebook LM, kind of the same sort of a basic layout. So next, the client and the agent kind of talk back and forth. The agents are able to ask for clarifications, information, and do various sub actions on behalf of the clients or users. Next, you can describe to the agent how you would like to communicate using text, forms, audio, video, etc. Here, it looks like it found three people that match the job description. It creates a reach out plan. And then two weeks later, once interviews were complete, here's kind of a shot of the UI. So again, very similar to Notebook Lamb, as you can see, click on get update and the agent replies to you saying, here are the three candidates who have passed the interview and are pending background checks. We tell it to please initiate the background check for all candidates and it goes on to do it. So again, it actually goes into this agent space and looks at the available agents with the right capabilities, the right skills to complete that task. So in this case, they found symbol background agent. Well, this is fascinating. So it's saying based on my agent registry. So this is the your agent talking to you about the other agents that it has found in the agent space saying I have access to three background check agents using symbol background agent for all candidates given the best experience in the past interactions. This could be huge. I mean, imagine this marketplace growing and continuously adding more agents each one having their own sort of reputation based on, you know, user's experience with it. So it's able to successfully initiate background check for one of the candidates, but the other two, it failed to do so because they're outside of the US, which is outside of the scope for that particular agent. So it goes through and tries to find an international background checking agent. And then it was able to initiate the background checks of the remaining two candidates with this particular agent. It gives you the estimated time to completion, two business days, and that's it. I gotta say, this is pretty interesting and it's, it seems like this could be very, very powerful. Here's the kind of the agentic ecosystem, or at least the, the partnerships that are providing various agents and various capabilities. We have big names, Atlassian, Salesforce, Deloitte, Langchain, and Intuit, JetBrains, many, many more. There's quite a few that you probably recognize on here. Also, Lavi, a machine learning engineer at Google. So he posted a couple things. For example, they're sharing the agent development kit, ADK. It's an open source, flexible framework designed to simplify the development and deployment of multi-agent systems. Here's the quick start for installing that, the ADK, the agent development kit. But let's take a look at this, the agent to agent protocol. 
So this is kind of part of that agentic space that they're talking about, some sort of a protocol where everybody can kind of build on the same platforms and allow for all these agents to work together seamlessly. So AI agents, of course, the promise of AI agents is for us to be more productive, to automate a lot of our daily recurring day-to-day -day tasks, including some potentially fairly complex tasks. And of course, more and more enterprises are building and deploying these autonomous agents, from ordering new laptops to aiding customer service representatives to assisting in supply chain planning. Now, of course, if we're using various different agents from different companies, there's got to be some sort of an ecosystem that allows them to interact to make sure that it's safe, secure, that all the data sort of is uh, siloed and doesn't uh, just uh, leak back and forth. As we're saying here, enabling agents to interoperate with each other, even if they were built by different vendors or in a different framework will increase autonomy and multiply productivity gains while lowering long-term costs. And hence, uh, they're launching this uh, new open protocol called A2A, Agent to Agent. They have more than 50 technology partners aboard, so we're talking about Atlassian, Cohere, Intuit, Langchain, MongoDB, PayPal, Salesforce, t tons of names that you would recognize, Deloitte, etc. And this A2A protocol is going to allow these agents to work together, securely exchange information, coordinate actions, etc. And you might have heard about Anthropic's MCP, the Model Context Protocol, which allows these large language models to communicate with a lot of other software. We saw one that got integrated into Blender and was basically using Claude to create create 3D scenes in Blender. And this A2A is an open protocol that complements the MCP. I feel like a lot of these acronyms will make things very hard to follow. They're especially common in AI and ML. So you've probably memorized the acronym MCP and now add one more to it, A2A. Just imagine how many more we'll have to memorize before we get to AGI. Yeah, so the big point here is that as a user, you're allowed to sort of combine various agents from various providers, kind of put them together and have them just go and do whatever tasks you need them to do seamlessly. You just like pick and choose. It doesn't matter what company they're from. It's plug and play. As long as the agent is capable of doing that task, you can easily call it to work on your behalf and whatever project you're doing. This seems like it could be big, massive. I mean, if you think about it, if this ecosystem grows, more and more capable agents are added to it, it will be very easy to, to monetize it, for example. It will be very easy to use it. Basically, one chat window, one chat bot could give you an access to millions of agents, perhaps, however many will exist on this platform. So basically, any agent that wants to be plugged in here could be. And here are some of the design principles. Embrace agenda capabilities. So it focuses on enabling agents to collaborate in their natural, unstructured modalities, even when they don't share memory, tools, and context. So it's going to be interesting to see how they sort of pull this off. So it's built on a lot of the existing standards. So it's easy to integrate it with existing tech, with existing IT stacks that businesses already use. Secure by default with enterprise-grade authentication and authorization. Support for long-running tasks. So everything from short, quick tasks to deep research that might take hours or even days when humans are in the loop. So in that example, we saw that that took days, right? Two days later, you have the people interviewed and then, you know, two business days were waiting for them to get their background checks, etc. And it's modality agnostic. So it's not just text. It can do whatever you want, audio, video, streaming, etc. So you have your client agent representing you. You have the remote agent and your client agent does the secure collaboration, task and state management, user experience, negotiation, capability discovery. So we kind of covered that in the video. And so this protocol, what it does is it communicates between the client agent and a remote agent, right? So the client agent is the thing that kind of represents you. It's, it's your people, the people working for you, the agents working for you. And then it works with the remote agent giving it whatever context it needs and working with it, updating it, et cetera, to complete the task that you, you set for it to be carried out. So it looks like these agents, they can advertise their capability. It's using a simple a JSON format. So you kind of list the capabilities like we saw, for example, US-based background checks, right? You can say that's one of the capabilities that your agent can do. And this is what I mean by it can be easily monetized because if you're a company that's providing those services, you might charge a fee of some sort for that, for doing that work. But your agent kind of sit there and advertise its services. Like I am able to do background checks within the US. And then whenever somebody needs that, right, that little agent interfaces, the remote agent interfaces with the client agent to complete that. I haven't seen any reference to how payments get handled yet, but obviously that's going to come in at some point. I mean, there's going to be some sort of a credit system, some sort of a point system, whatever that you can buy certain amounts of credits. 
I'm just guessing, but maybe it's just the agent being able to like charge your credit card. We're going to see. But obviously, when you combine this with the ability to purchase services, this thing is kind of taking it to the next level. And obviously, I've kind of hinted at this earlier, but if you think about what made Google so successful back in the days is they basically created a search bar as sort of the gate to the web. You type in what you want and it takes you to where you need to go. It was very different from how other people build their businesses online because instead of trying to keep them in their sort of website on Google.com, it was trying to get them off of Google.com, right? So you type in background checks for employment. For most of Google's history, they wanted you off of Google and onto, for example, this ad or this ad or this ad. In the future, of course, it's probably going to go to instead of where we're typing in something into a search bar, we're just going to ask our agent to do it. It's going to be some sort of a, maybe it's a chat bot, or maybe at some point we're going to have more of a, like a video, some sort of an AI avatar, audio, video, whatever. But the point is for some of these services, these businesses might want to pay to have their agent appear above the other agents that are available. How they do that? Probably by paying Google some money to have it prioritize their services services, their agent. This might be Google 2.0. We'll see. But it certainly seems like this is where they're trying to head to now. So the two agents communicate and all of their sort of communication is oriented towards task completion. It seems like they're calling the output of a task uh, an artifact. And of course, this kind of goes hand in hand with the ADK, the Agent Development Kit, that allows you to build multi-agent applications. They introduced it at the current conference, the Google Cloud Next 2025, and it empowers developers to build production-ready agentic applications with greater flexibility and precise control. Word to the wise, you better sign up for this ASAP because there's going to be probably a pretty long waiting list. If the other things that Google just announced are any indication that a lot of people are going to be pouring into this thing and trying to access it and use it. So search for Google agent space, click on sign up for access. They just want your name, business email, phone number, job role. There's like seven fields to fill out and you're going to be on the wait list. What do you think about this? Does this have the air of something big about it? Let me know in the comments. In the future, I think we'll just all be saying, have your agents talk to my agents. We'll do a full test of this thing the second I get my hands on it.